to the ongoing crisis in Venezuela now. The border with Colombia has been reopened for the first time in four months, a move that will let desperately needed aid flow into the country. Thousands of people crossed into Colombia throughout the day to buy food and medicine. The border was closed earlier this year after the opposition tried to bring aid in via the route. Today, opposition leader Juan Guaido rallied thousands of his supporters, declaring Nicolas Maduro's grip on power was nearing an end despite today's developments. What do we still need to be out on the street? What do we still need to keep up international pressure? What do we still need to keep looking for international support? Venezuela's imploding economy mixed with political hostilities has led to waves of violence and a stalemate. The crisis has been unfolding since January when Juan Guaido declared himself acting president. More than 50 countries, including Australia, backed him in that position. But the Maduro regime has the support of China and Russia and still maintains the backing of key parts of the military. Across the country, 90 per cent of people don't have enough to eat amid an almost total collapse of the economy. The IMF is forecasting that this year the situation will get even worse, with inflation set to hit 10 million per cent. It's hard to imagine how that's even possible, but for Venezuelans, that's the miserable reality. Over the next two nights, we'll bring you an in-depth look at what life is like in Venezuela. ABC correspondent Zoe Daniel and cameraman Niall Lenahan are in Caracas for this special series. Until recently, the world's largest oil reserves made Venezuela the wealthiest country in South America. Even now, the capital Caracas could almost be a normal city, until you look closely. It means Diaznel Rincon is doing a good trade in fixing old and broken shoes all day, but he pays a price as the country falls apart before his eyes. Venezuela is a rich country, but corrupt politicians have damaged it. Venezuelans are infuriated with their president, Nicolas Maduro. They blame him for the extreme cost of living. The local currency is virtually worthless. Nine out of ten families can't afford enough food. The situation is so bad that the average person has lost 11 kilograms in a year and several babies die every week from malnutrition. Hola. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Anna Navarro, her husband and four children have been struggling to survive on the minimum wage, less than $10 a month. Nothing seems to improve. It all gets worse. So I think there should be a change to give the opportunity for someone else to rule. They're typical of the families we meet who are trying desperately to hold things together. What do the children say when you tell them that you can't feed them? It's difficult, huh? Here, the children get one meal a day from a soup kitchen. It's not much, just beans and broth. But it's better than nothing for the moment. So what does money buy you here? In short, not much. A kilo of meat or a carton of eggs will cost you three quarters of your monthly salary. Throw in half a kilo of tomatoes, maybe a kilo of onions or potatoes, and that's your entire paycheck gone. And the inflation is so bad that the price can change by the hour. Granos. Government-backed community councils hand out one bag of food per month to each family. Four kilos. Four kilos. Sí. The economy's contracted by more than half since President Maduro came to power as oil prices crashed. But those who support him say it's US sanctions that are causing the problems rather than long-running government mismanagement of the socialist country's oil money. Before the blockades, we had the opportunity to be a great country, a prosperous nation. We had the chance to have it all. They reject Juan Guaido. A president like that wouldn't be accepted in the US. A self-proclaimed president would not be accepted in other countries. So why do we have to accept him here? But outside, where an open sewer spews filth into the street, the sentiment is different. Nearby, a man stops us 
keen to have his say. Women and men, young and old, have to realise the critical situation the country is going through these days. Hunger, misery, repression and unemployment. Venezuelans are commonly punished by government-backed thugs for speaking up like this. His outburst was filmed. However, in a country where money now makes a bag but can't buy one, there comes a point where things speak for themselves. Zoe Daniel, ABC News, Caracas. Now to the second part in our special series on the ground in Venezuela. The country's self-declared president, Juan Guaido, says change is still coming to his country even though it's been over five months since he first tried to take the leadership. Tonight, we look at why that change is still out of his grasp. Juan Guaido is the man who would be president. Aged just 26, he founded the Popular Will Party in 2009. A year later, he was elected deputy leader of the National Assembly. When the 2018 presidential election was declared illegitimate by the parliament, Guaido was put forward as the country's new leader. He was quickly backed by the international community. But the current president, Nicolas Maduro, still holds key allies, especially in the military, who are keeping him in power. ABC correspondent Zoe Daniel is in Venezuela with cameraman Niall Lenahan and spoke to Juan Guaido. Juan Guaido has entered the fray for Venezuela's leadership at just the right time. Presidente Juan Guaido! Despite the over-enthusiastic welcome, he's not yet the conquering hero of a debilitated nation. But he's working on it. Corruption created this crisis. The opposition leader has struck when Venezuelans are desperate for a shining light, or at least an alternative to President Nicolas Maduro. I think Juan Guaido is the one that really got in the right place, in the right moment, where the people in Venezuela want to change. So he's, the, he's our leader, and now we have to be with him. In late April, the opposition mounted an uprising to get Maduro out. It failed because the military stood with the president. Juan Guaido, backed by more than 50 countries, including the US and Australia, says it's not over. <laughs> It's not just a problem for Venezuela. What the international community has done so far is very important. The recognition of our constitution and of me as interim president, Australia did that too. What's important now is to keep the pressure up. The dictatorship won't voluntarily leave. One Guaido has been appearing at these sorts of events all around the country in a kind of one-man presidential campaign. Because even if Maduro does go, the aim is to hold a new, free and fair election. And Guaido would still have to be. As the leader of the National Assembly, he declared himself president, which is constitutionally allowed, after 2018 elections that didn't follow the rules. But there's a suggestion he might not even be the candidate in an eventual new poll. Some are saying that you're just the one facilitating the transition and that you won't end up leading the country. The most important thing right now is to stop the usurpation, to contain the tragedy of the humanitarian emergency, to contain the worsening catastrophe in order to have a transition to free elections. We will have one candidate from the opposition who will be chosen by consensus or in primary elections. And you won't tell me if that's going to be you or not? <laughs> will you be the candidate or not? We will see. Nicolas Maduro is still clinging to power. This protest shows supporters celebrating the government-issued monthly food parcels. It's an international campaign. They come here to film people and make it look like our country is starving. But that is a lie. Russia, China and Cuba are the ones standing behind Nicolas Maduro. And the military remains in line for now. Zoe Daniel, ABC News, Valencia, Venezuela.